This week we're reviving a 40 year old bathroom by bringing it into this century with some easy updates. This is like almost perfect, but it's cast iron and it's yellow. I've been helping homeowners improve their home for a lot of years. They think it's intimidating, but it actually it can be a lot of fun. And we're here to help. There you go. <laughs> Dad's the expert, but I've learned a few things along the way. Practical, realistic home improvement information is what today's homeowner is all about. This house was built in 1976, and the McCarsons, Ronnie and Cindy, recently purchased it in order to downsize a bit. We've been in it a little over a year. We were in 2,650 square feet. We went down to 1,700, and it really has all the space that we need. All our kids are gone. What I like about this home is that it's just got character, I think. It was a one-owner home. Things were really pretty pristine. They yeah. were just retro. Retro, yeah. yeah. They were retro, yeah. <laughs> it was all 70s greens and golds, and it was just uh, needed to be a total makeover. So we took all the carpet up and put hardwood floor down, repainted everything, new countertops. It looks more country. Uh -huh. it's no, not con you it's don't not say country. country these I don't days. say country these days. You say farm. We say, far we say farmhouse is what we say these days. And now it's bright and cheery on the inside, but it's still got two bathrooms that are 70s bathrooms that have 70s countertops and 70s fixtures, and both of the bathrooms have to be redone. Mine is the baby blue, but I'm gonna be watching what we do so I can apply it to when I do my bathroom. So I'm excited about that. But Cindy's bathroom comes first, and that's what Chelsea and I are here to see. I'm really anxious to see this bathroom. It sounds pretty interesting. Oh, right come on back. We'd love to have you. <laughs> well, I can tell you guys have already done a lot of work. New doors, the trim looks great. Even the popcorn ceiling's going. You guys yes, been doing a lot of work around we, here. There's been a lot of work done, a lot of sweat and tears, but we're, <laughs> it's coming along. But uh, I wanted to introduce you to a 1976 Mella Yellow bathroom. Check this baby Ooh, out right, right here. Yes, that's oh, just wow. kind of stepping back in time a little oh, bit. Oh, yeah, man. This is awesome. The boy is in great shape. Yeah, but it's yellow. <laughs> Yellow. Yeah. Harvest gold, Which yellow. If duh. there's a color that I would choose, gold would not be it. What definitely. would be your wish list? Yeah, definitely the countertop. To raise the countertop. Yeah, raise that, that is, that is pretty good. Cool. Yeah. Wow, 30 inches. Help my back out. Yeah, yeah I know, and I'll tell you. I'm not getting mm. any younger, so. Yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> There's certainly a facelift on the front there to keep that from looking so dated. Right, new yeah. sink. The floor, the floor has got to go. I mean, yeah. we got, we've got to do something with that. And then, of course, the, the tub is like almost perfect, but it's but cast it's, iron and it's yellow. I thought, well, maybe we can just find a really pretty shower curtain to cover <laughs> that tub up. It's heavy, and we don't know what we're going to be able to do with that. Well, let's get just a few pictures here and a little bit of measuring, and of course, let us do a little little thinking about this. All right, we're ready to go. Our plan is to tile over the existing ceramic floor and give the vanity a new top, sink, cabinet doors, and a few inches of height. Then we'll cover up the dated tub and surround with an acrylic overlay. Dad, we took out the cast iron tub at my house, but that's not something we want to do again. That was a lot of fun, wasn't it? <laughs> and to take it out piece by piece. Yeah, most of the time you have to break one up like that in order to get out because it weighs so much. And to navigate out a two-foot door, this situation is going to be a lot easier, I think you'll see. All right, Cindy, do you want to grab those things and then yeah. um, put them in a safe space and we'll get everything out of here. Anytime you're doing floors, it saves a lot of headache to remove the doors as your first step. All right, Bear, we flipped the coin earlier and uh, you won, so you get to pull the toilet, okay? Okay. Yeah, we can't update this bathroom without getting rid of those tile baseboards. Yeah, that pretty much dates it. Well, breaking the first one and then getting the flat bar in behind it and prying it off will prevent you from having to do any damage along the top and it just generally pries off pretty well. Can you quiet down? It's a little loud in here. Get you some earmuffs. This room is too small for all of these loud noises. Anywhere I am, it's crowded anyway. So uh, it was starting to get a little testy in there, so I decided to take my big old self and go out in the hallway. That was a safe move for me. Here, I just need to take a break. You know, when you're working in a small space like a bathroom, you expect to get bumped a little bit. This bathroom ain't big enough for the both of us. But why'd you step on my hand? Not really, though. Whoa! 
I don't know, I'm a pretty good actor, I guess. After we remove the sink and vanity top, we also remove the existing marble threshold before prepping the old tile floor. Installing a ceramic tile over an existing ceramic tile is a perfectly feasible thing to do as long as the existing ceramic tile is in pretty good shape and you prep and you install it the right way. All right, now it's time to have a little fun. Right. Okay, this is what's called a pole sander and what we have is like a hundred grit paper on it. Uh -huh. So it's just like all that fun you have with the mop. I need to mop more often, but mopping with sandpaper, nope, didn't see myself doing that. Well, just like when you're painting a sealed wood, you want to sand the gloss off of it before right. you paint or, in this case, put thin set on top. Just a little bit of sanding will make everything stick to it a lot better. After sanding, we give the floor a thorough cleaning and the prep is complete. If you live in a home long enough, sooner or later, you have to deal with a plumbing clog. In this case, the sink is clogged up and you see we have a lot of standing water. So you can't make the repair without removing the water first. Imagine taking out that P-trap to clean it out and all that water would rush into the cabinet. So you have to remove the water and I guess you could use a sponge or maybe a towel, but rather than using that to sop up all that water, I've got a quicker, easier way. Use a pool toy. This is a kid's toy they use to suck up the water out of the pool and squirt it at one another. But it works great like a little siphon pump to remove the water, the standing water from the sink. Once you have all that water removed, then you can make the repair. You can take out that peat trap and not worry about all several gallons of water rushing in. And this is great for, you know, sink clogs, toilet clogs. If you have a malfunctioning uh, washing machine that has water standing in the tub, you can use this little toy to suck out all that water and then you can make the repair. But I would say after using this to repair a plumbing leak, you might want to go out and buy the kids a new toy. We're helping Ronnie and Cindy update their vintage 70s bathroom, and the next step is new tile. You know, this wood finished ceramic flooring has been so popular over the last few years, but we've never really even used it before. No, we haven't. Well, when I saw it in it. the store, it just it jumped out at me. I thought, you know, we're trying to do that farm style look, and we've got wood in the other parts of our home, and I thought, well, let's try that. It's even got the simulated knots. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. Like it's crazy. They do a pretty yeah. good job on yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Have y'all thought about which direction you want to run it, perpendicular or parallel? We would like some input. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. the easiest way to do that is to grab oh, yeah, a few. Lay out yeah. a few. Sometimes the direction of the tile can create a lot more cuts, which is something you want to avoid. Here, the tile looks like wood, and the general rule of thumb with wood is to run it parallel with the longest wall in the room. Can you visualize it even though they're next to each other? Mm -hmm. yeah. What are you thinking, Dad? You're asking me? <laughs> wow. I don't want to bias the decision. We'll see what Ronnie and Cindy say. I think I'd go for the long ways. Do we have a winner, Ronnie? I think we have a winner, long way. <laughs> Is that what you were going to say? I was going to say that. It, makes it always sense. seems to me like it's just like in a hallway. Yes. You want it to be inviting and you want it to bring you into the room. Yes. And the really good thing here, we, we won't have any cuts at all here and just a small cut there. I mean, that works awesome. out great. Ding, awesome. ding, 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 ding. Okay, ding. let's get to work. Bear is mixing up some ProLite thin set adhesive from custom building products to install the tiles because this stuff is ideal for a tile over tile application. After chalking a guideline for the first row of tiles, Chelsea and Cindy start applying the thin set. That's the first time I've seen that kind of tool. A notched trowel. So you make it look pretty easy. Are you wanting me to take over? Do you want you to? Gonna... Well, I'll try. So you just kind of spread it on and then you go back and do the grooves. I love how eager Cindy was to get down on her knees and help me out with a thin set. She picked up on it pretty quickly. Never thought I'd be doing this. <laughs> I was excited to see her laying tile because we're going to do our other bathroom and I can't wait to see her put the tile in our next bathroom. Ha ha. <laughs> oh, oh, me. The tile cuts are made on a wet saw outside in a tent that Bear set up to contain the overspray. Nice hat. Well, this thing is pretty low because it only finishes out with the top at 30 inches, so we can right. go to 32, 34, I've even right. done them 38. What, what are you thinking? Well, I think since this is my wife's bathroom, <laughs> a smart man will let her make that decision. Oh, honey, that was a quick honey decision come over here you. and tell him what you think, okay? 
My husband is a smart man because he doesn't want to pick too many fights with me. I have wisdom, divine I wisdom. Like having it about 35 and a half. Mm -hmm. 35 and a half, can we do that? Okay, no okay. problem. All right. To reach that height, we've attached two by fours to the walls around the vanity. The face will be cut from a piece of one by six. Now, I know you're doing this in your other bathroom at some point. Yeah. What I'm doing here is I'm gonna set this exactly five inches, and that'll be the, the, the piece right across the front. Now, will that fit properly it'll and so fit, forth? It'll fit right on top okay. of the existing cabinet. Mm -hmm. And that'll leave a little crack, mm -hmm. but we'll cover it with a piece of screen door mold. Look at that. Yeah. Perfect. All right, now, you see that little crack we're talking about right yes. there? Yes. All right. Look at that magic strip right behind you in that corner. Okay, cool. All right. This will dress it out. We'll try to get it right in the center of that seam. I'm amazed how it looks. All right, so we got plenty of support on it and nothing in the way of any plumbing. So we'll be able to set the new top in and all of that. But first, we've got to find a painter somewhere. Mm, I wonder where that could what, be. Raise your hand. Come on, raise, raise your <laughs> hand. Okay, now we got it. Upon first glance, all of these bath faucets look the same, but looks can be deceiving because there is a standout difference on one of them, and I'm going to show you that. This is the Delta Broadmoor 4 inch bath faucet. And what sets this apart is look, it has a drop down sprayer. How ingenious! Now it makes it easier for you to clean your sink out in the bathroom. You know, you used to could only do this in your kitchen. Now I can get all of that toothpaste and all that stuff that my husband leaves in the sink. Another feature is it has the spot shield so that when water splatters on here, when it dries, it'll actually disappear so that you don't have a dirty looking faucet. Now, as far as the drain goes, it's really easy to stop the drain because all you gotta do is push it down. Then you can open it up by pressing it again. This is great also because it has the worry-free drain catch so that no jewelry is gonna go down there and no hair is gonna go down there to create a problem later on. Ronnie and Cindy's new floors are well underway. We've raised the vanity height and Cindy is painting the new vanity doors. Next up is the yellow tub, and James Cole and his crew from Bathfitter are here to tackle that. Well, James, I got to tell you, I have remodeled hundreds of bathrooms, a lot of them with ceramic. We have to chip it all out, so I'm really anxious to see this process with the tub over a tub type of thing. But first thing I've got to ask you, there's a lot of different tubs out there. How in the world do you guys have the ability to match every one of them? We take eight precise measurements. Mm -hmm. From those measurements, we bounce it against a program, we come up with what tub it is. Mm -hmm. Like this tub right here is our mold 587. <laughs> and what it is is basically a skin that goes over. Mm -hmm. Imagine two Dixie cups going inside each other. Oh, gotcha. So yeah. it does not take up any space. So this isn't the tub. This no, is sir. just kind of a, this what do we call it? Want to call it a safety template? We, ca we call <laughs> it a tester in our industry to make uh -huh. sure that we have made it right. We drop it in. Oh, wow. And man, when it's in there, wow. you know you have got the right one. Wow, that is amazing. And no voids in there. No voids. Right. Most cases, y'all are, are able to be in and out in a day? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because we don't have to remove the tile. We leave that, save our landfills. We're eco-friendly. Get it done in anywhere from six to seven hours. Wow. In this case, we're also replacing the shower valve, so the tile around it is chipped out for the plumber to install the new one. Once the new tub liner is marked and cut to fit, they apply primer and adhesive to the old tub. The new countertop looks so much like natural stone, you have to touch it to believe it. And it looks yeah. really good. Yeah, well I measured this thing and it is tight, tight, so hopefully those walls are in pretty good shape. Well, they won't be after you walk through. In the event, rare event, that they get banged up a little bit because of the countertop going in, I can fix it. Okay. After a little convincing, the top goes into position. By the time we glue it and the side splash is in place, the tub is ready to do the same. While the guys are busy covering up the yellow tub, Dad and I are going to get started on changing out the yellow sink by moving the faucet from the old sink to a nice new white one. Well, the faucet's looking like some pretty good shape. Oh, yeah, especially for the farmhouse that Cindy wants. That's right. Speaking of which, how's the farmhouse painting going over there? Oh, I'm trying. I've always 
thought, well, I think I could learn to do that if somebody just showed me. He looked, looked like an artist. <laughs> Never would have thought I'd heard him say that. I'm glad you think so. <laughs> I'm not sure, but Cindy might give you the sink. <laughs> I'd be glad to give that away. <laughs> That's okay, Cindy, you can keep it. <laughs> Once the faucet is swapped, we can install the new sink. While the bath fitter crew sets the noose around over the yellow tile and installs the accessories on it, I'm modifying the old vanity drawers to accept the new drawer front. You know, most of the time when we're installing new drawer fronts, all we have to do is remove just a few screws from the inside, the old drawer front comes off and we can put the new one in. But in this case, this was actually one solid piece here on the front. So all we have to do here is cut this nice and flush like we've done. Then I can take the new drawer front, put it right on, put a couple screws in it, and this is gonna look so much better than that thin drawer front. Back in the bathroom, we're changing out the light fixture while the crew is completing the tub makeover to wrap up the day. So you see, this is the baseboard I was talking about. Right. A little taller than other parts of the house, but right. you can see it'll cover up all of that ugly from where that ceramic tile baseboard was taken. It does down. a great job, man. Love it. Cindy has a nice new bathtub, and to help her keep it nice and clean, I'm showing her how to use wet and forget shower spray that's going to help prevent the buildup of dirt and soap scum. So I'm gonna spray it in the spots where I always get soap scum in my shower, <laughs> underneath the shelves and then up high. So this will help prevent it, but then you can also use it weekly mm -hmm. to keep it clean and you don't have to scrub it. You gotta love a product that not only cleans after it gets dirty, but helps prevent it from getting dirty in the first place. Once we get our new cabinet doors installed, we're finally ready to apply the grout. I'm using Fusion Pro for this bathroom floor because it's easy to spread and clean up, the color is perfectly consistent through and through, and it's incredibly stain resistant. You know, applying grout's like instant gratification. You can see exactly what the finished floor will look like. So I'm gonna work my way out the door, allow it to dry overnight. We'll be installing the toilet, a couple doors, tweaking this thing out a little bit, and it'll be 100%. Ronnie and Cindy have done a lot to update their home, but the hall bath was still stuck in the 70s. The floor was dated, the vanity was dated, and the tub was, well, yellow, really yellow. Now their bathroom is taking on the modern farmhouse style that Cindy always wanted. The gray wood look ceramic on the floor adds a touch of rustic to the otherwise clean, contemporary look of the room. Raising the vanity has made it more convenient, but the new doors, countertop, and sink have made it fabulous. And that ugly yellow tub? Well, it's been hidden by the clean white lines of its 21st century successor, giving this old bathroom new life. We're gonna enjoy this bathroom thoroughly. I know we are. My favorite part was getting to know Danny and the crew and just being like family. They're family with us now and we've had so much fun together, not only watching the transformation of the bathroom but making new friends in the process. It inspires me to want to try more things in my home. The second bathroom, it doesn't look quite as scary now. We're not scared and so uh, we look forward to the challenge of uh, trying to transform the next bathroom. You know, Ronnie and Cindy have done a great job upgrading this older home. And now that the bathroom has a brand new facelift, it's up to that standard. And along the way, they were able to pick up a few tips and skills that they can use on renovating their other bathroom. And every week here on Today's Homeowner, that's what we want to provide you. Some ideas, a few skills, and a little inspiration. Hey, I'm Danny Lifford. We'll see you next week here on Today's Homeowner. All right. That's a wrap. All right. All right. In case you haven't heard, this is the 500th episode of today's homeowner. Thanks for sharing it with us. We hope you'll stick around for a few hundred more. This looks delicious. There's a hole in my bucket. Dear Sally, dear Sally. <laughs> what do you learn those old hillbilly tunes like? You could do stand up. Yeah, stand up. Well, no, at that age, it'd be sit down. Uh, but anyway. <laughs>
Next week, it's time to repurpose the garage for a family who needs a hangout space more than they need a place to park the car. You're the boss. Uh, I'm glad somebody recognizes that. <laughs>